Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Ian Welsh. And I'm Madison Van Allen. This week in SPTV News, a second edition of the Wisconsin Idea is printed. The next installment of Frozen is coming soon. And lawmakers are addressing the vaping epidemic. All of this and more when we return. Pointer families are continuing to take pride in their university by participating in the 125,000 hour community service challenge. The project was presented to UWSP alumni and friends in honor of the university's 125th anniversary. Currently, the Alumni Association reports that over 2,000 volunteers have logged a total of 75,000 hours. Many volunteers were honored as the 2019 Mary Ann Nigbar Volunteers of the Year at, at the Pointers Gala last month. But this honor will also be given to any individual that logs hours in the next two months. To learn more about the Community Service Challenge and its volunteer opportunities, you can check out the 125th anniversary page found under the Alumni tab on the UWSP website. All service hours must be logged by midnight on December 31st. Cornerstone Press is hosting a book launch event to celebrate the release of their updated edition of Charles McCarthy's book, The Wisconsin Idea. The Cornerstone Press is the nation's first student-managed publishing house. The book, which hasn't been published since 1912, will lead off Cornerstone's new Wisconsin Heritage series. It details the collaboration between UW-Stevens Point faculty and Wisconsin legislators to create progressive state policies and laws. Experts on the Wisconsin idea and editors of the new edition will be speaking on the meaning behind the titular philosophy and on the updates made to the book. The launch event will be taking place in the Alumni Room on Tuesday, November 19th at 6.30 p.m. It is free and open to the public. For more information on the Wisconsin idea or other publications of the Cornerstone Press, you can check out their page under the English department on the UWSP website. Veterans Day is a special occasion that allows citizens to honor the men and women who have sacrificed their lives for the U.S. Charles Reingard has the story. Mid-State Technical College held a Veterans Day ceremony that consisted of a 21-gun salute, a performance of taps, and the presentation of the American flag. Mayor Mike Weasel was present for the ceremony at Mid-State and gave his thanks and appreciation for those who have and are in the service. You know, I've, I've never been able to serve myself. However, um, we work very closely with a lot of veterans organizations in, uh, in, in making sure that the sacrifices those men and women have made in the armed services are not forgotten um, and that we keep reminding ourselves that, uh, you know, freedom isn't free, right? In addition to the Veterans Day ceremony at Mid-State Tech, Next Home Priority, which is located on Park Ridge Drive, held their first annual Black Rifle fundraiser for the veterans. Howie Carter, owner of Next Home Priority, and Carly, director of marketing, were both interacting and helping sell various pastries and coffees for a dollar. The proceeds will be donated to the Portage County Veterans Day Emergency Relief Fund, which gives benefits to veterans and their beneficiaries. This has been Charles Unger with SPTV News. To donate and help veterans in need and show support, go to the Stevens Point website and search 
Veterans Day fundraisers. The Stevens Point Chapter of International Justice Mission held their biannual pop-up thrift store, Threads, this last Wednesday the 13th. Florence Anderson took a closer look. The UWSP International Justice Mission Chapter held a pop-up thrift store in the Laird Room on November 13th. This is the second run of the thrift store and they plan to run it again next semester. All proceeds are going towards efforts on stopping human trafficking. The leader of the UWSP chapter, James Cherwan, explains the idea started in Texas and made its way up to Stevens Point. And we thought it was a good idea, so we tried it, and people around here, well, they loved it, and we were like, well, this is a good event because we're raising enough money. All of IJM chapters are like trying to do this now, and it kind of feels cool that we're one of the first people to try it. James says the events are not only to raise awareness and funds for the group, but to remind students of how serious this issue can be. What we want people to be aware of is like, this stuff is not just like a, it doesn't happen in America because it happens everywhere. We want people to know that like this stuff happens and we've got to be aware of this and uh, so we, that's why we have these events. The group has meetings every Wednesday at 5 and can be found selling freedom flowers from the DUC. This has been Florence Anderson with SETV News. Meetings are open to all, and further information and events can be found on their Facebook page, IJM at UWSP. The Reformation and Improvement of Society and the Environment Organization here on campus is hosting an open forum to help st students ask questions of people from different backgrounds. We go to Austin Liepek for more. The Readable People event that will be hosted by RISE is an opportunity for students to converse with people from various backgrounds in a safe environment. As part of the event, students will be able to ask questions they might be too nervous to ask in a group setting something RISE's social media coordinator, Sage Lefebvre, believes can help people be more open when asking questions. I think it does create an atmosphere where more people do feel comfortable having those conversations and learning more about um, different communities. They might know that there's some sort of stigma associated. They might not know how to phrase the question correctly. They might be afraid of accidentally offending somebody. So. Um, a lot of times people choose to stay silent rather than speak out and um, learn more about something that they don't know about. And learning more about the unknown is something Sage argues is part of the college experience. Personal growth is a big part of going to college. Um, in order to experience personal growth, I think you have to step outside of your comfort zone. You have to um, talk to people that have different views and have different backgrounds as you than you in order to um, just experience more aspects of life and come to a better understanding of what other people might be going through. And it is that better understanding of others that RISE is trying to grow for all that attend the event. For SBTV, this has been Austin Leepak. Thanks, Austin. The event will be from 5 to 8 p.m. on November 18th. To find out more, Visit the events spin page for some additional information. The Environmental and Sustainability Issues Committee is holding Y'all Are Trash. There will be a free screening of the documentary Plastic Oceans, and the event will also bring attention to how the use of plastic damages our planet. Jake Zahn has more on the story. The Environmental and Sustainability Issues Committee is prepping for Y'all Are Trash, an event planned for Wednesday, November 20th. This will focus on just how bad plastic consumption really is and how to change the campus's mind for an alternative resource. We're hosting uh, the movie or the documentary Plastic Ocean. It's mainly about how our world is creating mass amounts of waste and it's um, having damaging impacts on the ecosystems. I think that it will put things into perspective for people. A lot of times we think short term and we don't realize where our waste really can end up and what it can do on a large scale. So I think that people can um, just gain a lot of knowledge about what their actions can do. 
Molly even discusses how the campus could change their ways about plastic usage. One of the things we're actually working on right now is getting rid of box water and plastic water. We recently found out that box water is not recyclable even though we've been using it and promoting it for the last couple of years. We are using Dasani plastic water bottles as well. So we are working as a committee to transition away from both of those to use aluminum. I think that we could also get rid of our single use um, forks and spoons that they offer at Lower Allen um, for uh, compostable versions or even just reusable ones that they can take back and wash. So those two would probably be a great start for the campus. Come out to the event, it should be a really great time. There will be free popcorn. And we also will have uh, Dave Barbier, which is our sustainability coordinator on campus, discussing waste impacts and Kelly Adlington, who is a recent Point graduate and um, she now works for Recycling Connections and they'll both be speaking at the event. So, With the event on their way, it will run from 6.30 to 9 p.m. in the DUC Theater. I'm Jake Sam reporting and this is SPTV News. For more information, please visit the UWSP ESIC website. UWSP Custodial Services will be fighting back against flu season viruses and bacteria by including the Clorox Total 360 system into their cleaning procedures. The new technology dispenses sanitizing solutions with, a, with an electrostatic sprayer. It is designed to allow the disinfectants to stick onto potentially infected surfaces like for desk or, or door handles for extended periods of time. University Faculty Services hopes that, hopes that it will provide public areas with better coverage of disinfecting products. This system will be used in all of the lecture halls across campus in order to create a healthy environment for both students and faculty. To learn more about the Clorox 360 system and other campus disinfecting strategies, you can visit the Faculty Services page on the UWSP website. That's all the news stories we have for you tonight. Coming up next, we have Alex Stroff with SBTV Sports. We'll be right back after the break. Warzawa, the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Warzala HR Department. How's it going, everybody? We start with the big dance tonight as the UW Stevens Point women's volleyball team is getting ready to play in the NCAA tournament for the first time in four years. The climb to the tournament was an improbable one, but now the dogs are looking to make the most of the opportunity. As the temperatures outside begin to decline, the UW Stevens Point women's volleyball team is as hot as it's been all season. Following their win in the WIAC tournament over the weekend, they're going dancing for the first time since 2015. The dogs got jiggy with it following their five set win at UW Whitewater on Saturday, clinching their spot in the NCAA tournament. Stevens Point learned its fate Monday as it will travel to St. Paul, Minnesota and will open tournament play against Augsburg University on Thursday. This comes in the first full season for head coach Lindsey Coy, who was an assistant for Stevens Point in 2015 during their last tournament berth. I, I haven't slept in a while. I've just been really excited for our team and for our program. It's been now since 2015 since we've been to the NCAA tournament, and so it's long time coming. Um, so we were, we were on edge today just wondering where we were going to go, but at the same time we felt 
confident because we weren't hoping and crossing our fingers we knew we were in. So that kind of had a, a little bit of relief, but we're excited. It's no doubt Stevens Point wouldn't be where they are without Coy and her top dog, senior April Gale. Gale, who leads all of Division Three in kills, was named the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Year last week. To say she wants to go out with a bang would be an understatement. It's just been amazing. Like, this is such an awesome time, and I'm so grateful for the time I've had here. And all of those awards are great, but, like, the main, my biggest goal was to make it to the NCAA tournament and do something really special for this program and for this team, and I'm just excited for everything to come all together. The dogs will look to continue their hot streak as the temperatures outside continue to drop. For SPTV Sports, I'm Alex Strofe. For updates on the tournament run, visit the UWSP Athletics website. Speaking of tournament runs, the Stevens Point women's soccer team found out their fate on Monday, joining 63 other teams to make up the field of 64. Look here as the team collectively jumped for joy when it was announced their team had received one of 21 at-large bids into the tournament. The Pointers will take on the Adrian Bulldogs in St. Louis, Missouri at Francis Olympic Field this Saturday. This is the first time since 2010 that the team will compete in the NCAA tournament. In its history, the program boasts 16 NCAA appearances, which is the most of any WIAC school. This year, the team is led by freshman Katie Friedrich, who has the team high of seven goals and 16 points. Following closely behind Friedrich are senior Maddie Hardiman and junior Caitlin Hess, who are tied with 13 points this season. Megan Ambelang, Caitlin Hess, and Katie Friedrich have also earned all WIAC honors, while Cassidy Spies was named to the WIAC All-Sportsmanship team. The Pointers record is 11-4-3 overall, and they finished 5-2 in conference play, which was good for a second-place finish in the WIAC. The team will play Saturday, November 16th at 1.30 p.m. Host College Washington University will take on Maryville, and the advancing teams will play each other on Sunday, November 17th at 1 p.m. Moving on now, although it is November, Major League Baseball is still making headlines, and not exactly great ones either. The Houston Astros are in the midst of yet another scandal following former Brewer and Astro pitcher Mike Fires claiming that Houston illegally stole signs from opposing teams during their championship run in 2017. Several people who were with the or organization rather, have said that their methods included stealing signs from the catcher using an outfield camera and making loud banging sounds from the dugout on off-speed pitches. The Major League Baseball office responded Thursday saying that it is investigating multiple teams, both the 2017 and 2019 Houston Astros included, for using illegal technology, signals, and other techniques to gain an unfair advantage. The Astros have made no other comments in regards to the investigation. Time to start writing rules that are known as unwritten rules, right, I'd say. Uh, that's it for sports. Next up is Florence with entertainment. Thanks for kicking it with me. I'm Alex Stroh for SB TV Sports. UW-Stevens Point is home. It's a university where professors know your name and get you involved in research. They inspire us to realize big dreams. At UW-Stevens Point, sustainability is what we stand for. Our beautiful campus encourages exploration, developing new fields, and problem solving for the real world. It's a great place to launch your career. UW-Stevens Point is home. Apply today at uwsp.edu. Welcome back, Pointers. Looking for a fun way to interact with friends and test your skills in epic combat with your favorite characters to prove who's the best? Well, look no further than the Super Smash Bros. 1 vs. 1 and 2 vs. 2 tournament happening this Saturday on campus. SBTV's Ian Welsh takes a closer look at this one-of-a-kind event. Sunnertainment Productions will be hosting their first ever Super Smash Bros. tournament this Saturday, September 16th at 7 p.m. in the Encore building of the DUC. This event provides gamers 
with the chance to compete with one another for the chance to become the Smash Brothers Ultimate Champion. Event producer Michael Zawaski says that this event does a lot more than offer fierce competition with players from around Stevens Point. This is like it's fun to play with friends. Um, it's very competitive. Um, I'm not that good at, good at it personally, but my favorite characters in the game are the Ice Climbers or the Villager. So if I just want to have fun, those are mainly the people I usually play with. So it's just mainly uh, a very friendly game for people to play with, and it's just the show you after skills. The latest edition of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate has 75 different characters you can choose to play and fight as, such as Kirby, Pokemon Trainer, Luigi, Ice Climbers, Link, Meta Knight, Villager, and Mario, to name a few. But, but if you are worried about not having your own gaming console to play on, you won't have to go out and, and buy your own. Uh, as we're working with the Video Game Enthusiast Club, um, they are supplying us with the uh, um, consoles. Um, they may not have enough um, controllers, so um, if students have been emailing me and asking if they should bring their own, I said yes, they can bring it. And also in the student message of the day, I've been sent I put, um, it's recommended that you bring your own controller. This event is open to all those who want to come out and have a great time playing their favorite characters, interacting with old friends, and making new ones as well, and getting a chance to show off your skills as you reach for the Ultimate champion spot. Um, they can sign up at the university information and tickets desk. Um, that's at the front of the DUC. Uh, they can just have to go up to the person working the desk and ask um, if I can sign up for the Smash Bros. tournament, either the 1v1 or 2v2. There's two separate sheets. And, and, or um, if there's still spots open, you can come to the event and ask to sign up. This event is f free with a student ID or $5 without. For more information, you can contact the Center Entertainment Office on their Facebook page. For SBTV News, I'm Ian Welsh. This event will take place in the Encore in the DUC building from 7 to 11 p.m. If you are interested in signing up, you can stop by the University Information and Ticket Desk for more information. Keep calm and let it go as we go into the new unknown because Disney's next big premiere comes out in next week. Frozen 2, the movie about magical powers and sisterly love, has the fastest selling pre-sale tickets compared to any other animated film in a 24 hour period, specifically knocking out Toy Story 4 as the previous record holder. According to Fandango, tickets went on sale just last week and many parents were on the top of it as they got their tickets for their own aspiring Anna or Elsa to go opening weekend. According to Fandango, they've also been tracking the sales and as of now is gross uh, $100 million and expected to reach much higher than $125 million during opening next weekend. Six years after the first film came out in 2013, Frozen fans are waiting anxiously and excited for Elsa and Anna and the rest of the gang's new adventure against the mythical forest. Frozen 2 comes out November 22nd. A unique kind of music is coming to UWSP later this November. Artist Adam Gould of Horseshoes and Han Granadas and Sarah both of Dead Horses will perform together on Saturday, November 23rd at 8 p.m. These two artists have performed many times before and this stop at UWSP is another one added. Their music shares similar messages, tones, and stories. 
as they travel the country. Gruel is an alumni of Stevens Point and where he and his friends formed horseshoes and hand grenades and have been touring since 2013. Zoss is an Oshkosh native and vocalist for Milwaukee-based band Dead Horses. Tickets are only available at the door and are $10 for the public and $5 for UWSC students with their ID. The concert will be held in the GUC Encore Room. Well, that's all the, in that's all the entertainment stories we have for you this week. Coming up next, we have Jake with Pointer Politics. I'm Florence Anderson with FPTV Entertainment. Welcome back, Pointers. Taking a look at some state news. Wisconsin's capital has entered into a debate that isn't about a public policy or passing a bill. The debate is about the tree displayed in the capital every year. Governor Tony Evers has announced that he will be calling the tree a holiday tree. Former Governor Scott Walker called it a Christmas tree when he was in office. A spokeswoman for Evers' office commented on the name change, stating that Evers' administration wants to remain inclusive in the name instead of endorsing religious views. Senator Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald called the change garbage. The Madison-based group Freedom From Religion Foundation said that when Walker renamed the Christmas tree in 2011, the name offended non-religious people and that it was a government endorsement of Christianity. The name change won't be in effect this year, but should make an appearance next year. Taking a look at some national news, the first day of public hearings and the impeachment inquiry of President Trump brought a potential bombshell about an apparent second follow-up phone call, CNN's Jessica Snyder reports. The committee will come to order. The first day of public impeachment hearings, beginning with a startling revelation for House investigators. Top diplomat to Ukraine, Bill Taylor, describing a phone call between President Trump and the U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland overheard by his aide one day after Trump's July 25th phone call with the Ukrainian president. As Mr. Sondland told President Trump, the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. Following the call with President Trump, the member of my staff asked Ambassador Sondland what President Trump thought about Ukraine. Ambassador Sondland responded that President Trump cares more about the investigations of Biden, which Giuliani was pressing for. Trump denying that call. I know nothing about that, first time I've heard it. But House Democrats say Taylor's latest information helps make their case that Trump abused his oath of office even stronger. But what this call indicates, as other testimony has likewise indicated, is that instructions are coming from the president on down. Taylor and Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent describing what they encountered as the Trump administration used military aid and a meeting at the White House as leverage for Ukraine to begin investigations for the president's political gains. To withhold that assistance for no good reason other than help with the political campaign made no sense. It was illogical, it could not be explained, it was crazy. Kent expressing his concerns about Trump's personal attorney Rudy Giuliani's involvement in U.S. relations with Ukraine including helping lead a smear campaign against then U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. I became alarmed as those efforts bore fruit. They led to the ouster of Ambassador Yovanovitch and hampered U.S. efforts to establish rapport with the new Zelensky administration in Ukraine. House Democrats asking about Giuliani's intent. What interest do you believe he was uh, promoting, Mr. Kent? I believe he was looking to dig up political dirt against a potential rival in the next election cycle. Ambassador Taylor, what interest do you believe he was promoting? I agree with uh, Mr. Kent. Meanwhile, Republicans defending Trump, arguing the two witnesses lack firsthand knowledge and casting the hearing as a partisan show. But the main performance, the Russia hoax, has ended. And you've been cast in the low-rent Ukrainian I've seen church prayer chains that are easier to understand than this. No pressure, no demands, 
no threats, no blackmail, nothing corrupt. But House Democrats standing firm. Is this what we want a president to do, to leverage their power? I think for most Americans, that's sinking in. After this week, lawmakers expect at least one more week of public hearings. While the vaping crisis continues across the U.S., lawmakers in Washington are putting together a response to the epidemic. Today, members of the Senate Committee on Health heard from officials with the CDC and the Center for Tobacco Products who are working to figure out what is causing the crisis. CNN's Camila Bernal has the details. As states around the country deal with a vaping epidemic, senators on Capitol Hill trying to get to the root of the problem. This harms you. This will addict you. This could ultimately kill you. The Senate Committee on Health Wednesday heard from health administrators whose agencies are currently investigating the issue. We continue to suggest that people consider refraining from use of all e-cigarettes or vaping products. So far, it doesn't appear that any one product is to blame but many cases do seem to be linked with illegal sales. The investigation has also found that THC has been present in most of the samples that the FDA has tested. On Friday, the CDC said vitamin E acetate, an additive sometimes used in THC and other vaping products, may be to blame. What we cannot say right now is whether there are other substances. As they figure it out, health officials sounding the alarm on the rise of youth vaping. Most young people walk around thinking that e-cigarettes are harmless. But while senators agree on the problem, it just seems to me we need swift, bold, quick action. The solution will be harder to find. We're probably going to end up doing the wrong thing. But if you want less kids to smoke, I'd just increase the penalties on people selling to kids, and you might have less kids smoking. In Washington, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. These decisions come after several vaping cases have led to deaths of teenagers across the U.S. That's all the political news we have for you this week. Now back to Ian and Madison. I'm Jake Son with SPTV Politics. Thanks, Jake. That's all we have for you this week in SPTV News. Until next time, Stephen Support, have a great night.